I have some good news today. Good. There's only one thing wrong with this shirt that's up here. It says Bob O'Brien. It needs a big old green shamrock on it. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, is, he is my Irish tenor. And I'm looking forward to seeing that first tenor again someday when my appointment comes. I'm glad to be home. You had a good rest. You had a really good rest. You got to see Emmy's brother back in Savannah, Georgia. and That's an old city, 280 years old. We got to see on our tour, and we went through the old, the old city of Savannah. And we got to see the church where John Wesley and Charles Wesley served while they were here in the, in the States, serving in a church there in Savannah. We saw the place where Joy to the World was written there in Savannah. We know Lowell Mason, who wrote uh, When I Survey the Wonderful Cross, the music to it. And we got to see some of those historic places. But I want you to know, I was really glad to come home. There is no place like home. While I was gone, two of our dearly beloved friends and uh, brothers in Christ went home to be with the Lord. Bill Scott went, went first on October 8th, and Bobby O'Brien went home to the Lord Jesus Christ October the 14th, both of them to the place that God prepared for them. So how can I say that that's good news? Well, it's good news when you know that Someday, I'm going to see him again because somebody had told them the gospel, the good news that Jesus so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And we miss him. And that's the sad part. I told the people at the uh, memorial service of the funeral for, for uh, Bill Scott, I said, uh, sometimes you find this up here leaking joy a little bit. And uh, we have tears, but they're tears of joy. And uh, whenever our loved ones depart and they go to home, we're tempted to be discouraged, aren't we? And get a little bit sad. That's just normal reaction. But each of us who believes in Jesus Christ, we're going to see him again. And God is still on the throne, and Jesus still saves. He still saves people. I don't care who you are. If you're here today and you feel bad about yourself, God is a merciful God, and He loves you, and He wants you to come to Him, to just leave the world behind, and to come to Him, and to obey Him, and to trust Him, not the world. And we still have a living hope. We still have a living hope. I don't know if this is working. It's not working. I'm going to need you to move and advance it. We have a living hope. I want us to stand for a moment and read this beautiful scripture together. It's in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. 1 Peter 1, 3. And uh, you might wonder, what am I doing today? I am introducing our speaker for the day. 1 Peter chapter 3. Chapter 1, verse 3, and what I say? 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Father, please speak to us now. We, do, we, we, we just plead with you to hear your voice through the Word, the Bible. I want to pray for Jonathan Reed when he comes in a few moments to deliver the message that you put on his heart. Just speak through him as well. And through the word of God that you put on his heart, I pray we would take it seriously because it's your word. And we would receive it, and we obey it. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, <laughs> amen to that. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope, you know, when you lose loved ones, you need a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. You may be seated. We have a living hope. 
We have a living hope. And we're living during a time when spiritual and moral values are being degraded and, 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 and disregarded by many people. Our, our values, of, and I need you to go to the next slide. Christians are being ridiculed today and we're blamed for many of the things that are going on. And this reminds me of some of the things that went on during Germany in the 1930s when Jews were being blamed. There is a person that's behind all this, Satan. It's the same old way he's been doing for thousands of years, trying to get people's eyes off of God, the one true God, and off of his son Jesus Christ, of course. We get blamed all the time, and it would be easy for us to get discouraged by what's going on in the world today and to get our eyes off of God. But I have good news for you today. We need to look up. God's not done. That's right. God's at work. He's raising up a next generation of men and women who know Him, love Him, desire to obey Him, as imperfect as we all are, aren't we? <coughs> there isn't anybody in here can say, I deserve to be in the presence of God. It's only by the grace of God. But God is at work. And when he raises up a young man like Tom to give up his past and put his faith in Jesus Christ and go to Bible college and to dedicate his life to be a minister of the Word of God, God is at work. Look up. And when you see God call a young man who's eight years old and put messages on his heart from the Word of God to deliver, the encouragement that you and I should receive from that is God is still on the throne. He is still working. He is still calling people to Himself. He is still raising up future messengers of the good news of Jesus Christ. I am encouraged. I am not discouraged. I am encouraged to see God working today. That's my primary thought today. And we need to raise up disciples because we see how Christians today many times aren't always doing the things that we ought to be doing. But we need to raise up disciples. There's a scripture. It's Proverbs 22 verse 6. We should take heed to it, and it's, it should be on the screen. It should be the, one of the next ones. It says, train up a child in the way that he should go, and when he's old, he will not depart from it. You don't start raising up future leaders in the church when they're 30 years old. You start raising them up when they're little children. That's the right way. I'm thinking about Samuel. And Hannah, I'm thinking about that time when God would speak and he would call someone and teach that young person to hear the voice of God. That's what we need. When all these troubles are going on around us in the world, don't be discouraged. Don't lose hope. We have a living hope and his name is Jesus Christ. You're going to be encouraged. Just a few moments, you're going to be encouraged to see that God's still working. We have families, not only one, but we have families in our church who seek to raise their children to know God and to serve Him. And that takes time, and it takes effort, and it takes love, and it takes forgiveness, and it takes determination to stand on the Word of God. It does. And each child is different. You know, in the Reed family, every child is different. You know, they are children, and sometimes children are children. And it's good. Gives me encouragement. But I'm also glad to see that he's taking children and he's making them to become future adults. That's our legacy. I'm excited about that. I'm excited about Nathaniel when Nathaniel gets in an aircraft and he flies high, fast, and safe. <laughs> and Matthew when he's learning to play piano or 
Jonathan, when he's learning to, to deliver a message from God, or Grace, I don't know what Grace is going to do yet, but I am confident that her parents are teaching her to respect and to honor God. Isn't that what we're supposed to be doing? And we need to see that and encourage that and pray for families. And that's our responsibility to raise up disciples. And that's good news. Because God is still raising up new laborers under the harvest. Next slide. When we're tempted to be discouraged, look up. Don't look down. Look up to Jesus. I want to say to you what Paul wrote to young Timothy many, many years ago. It's in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 11. Let's read this together. I'm just going to read it off the screen. These things, command and teach, let no one despise your youth, but be an example to the believers in work, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in purity, Till I come, give attention to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. 